in this video, I will show you how to apply Macaulay's method to calculate the deflection of a simply supported beam subjected to a point load at the center. For this case, our beam will be 8 meters long with a rectangular transversal section of 200 by 600 millimeters and a load of 80 kilonewtons. Now, there are seven steps in Macaulay's method. Steps that once learned will allow you to calculate the deflection of determinate beams under any loading condition. In the first step, we will draw the free body diagram of the beam. With this diagram, we can find the unknown support reactions and obtain the general moment equation M. For this simple example, it is evident that support reactions are half of the point load, that is 40 kN each. Now that we determine the support reaction, this is a term for the magic cut, as I call it, we will make a cut at the right end of the beam, making sure to include as many loads applied to the beam as possible. Notice that in the place where I made the cut, I'm leaving out the reaction of the right support at location C. Don't worry about this as the effect of this support reaction is included in the reaction found for support A. Great, this part is done. To obtain the moment equation, we need to relate the point of application of each of the loads with respect to the cut. I'm going to say that the reaction force at A is located at a distance x from the cut. In a similar way, I'm going to say that the center point load is located 4 meters from support A and at a distance x minus 4 from the cut. Taking moments with respect to an imaginary axis crossing at the cut point, I will have that the bending moment at any point along the beam can be defined as the moment resulting from the cut minus the moment produced by the reaction at support A, which is 40 times x, plus the moment produced by the center load, which is 80 times x minus 4 and that's equal to zero. If I do some reordering of equation terms, I will end up with this equality. This resulting equation is a powerful equation in Macaulay's method, and you will see why. The second step is pretty simple. Just equate m to the term ei times the second derivative of y with respect to x. The latter is a term well known called the general deflection equation, which is derived using Euler's Bernoulli's theory. We will call this result equation 1. Then, in the first step, we will integrate equation 1 to get the rotations along the beam. Remember that from the integration process, we will get an integration constant. We will name this constant C theta to refer that it comes from the rotation formula. Let's call this equation 2. Notice here the integration rules followed by the Macaulay brackets. Fourth, Integrate the equation 2 to obtain deflections along the beam. In this step, we will also get another integration constant that will be named C sigma. This resulting equation will be equation 3. Step number 5. Find all displacements and rotations. You can find these from constraints or specific conditions resulting from the type of supports used. In our simple supported beam, the boundary conditions are as follows. Support A, located at x equals 0, have a 0 deflection, or y equals 0. Support C, located at x equals 8, also has a 0 deflection. Using the first boundary condition, we find that C sigma equals 0. And doing the same with the second boundary condition, we find that C theta equals minus 320. Let's not forget that both constants are expressed in kilonewtons. Then in step 6 is the time to introduce the values of the rotation and deflection constants. We get equation 4 after substituting C theta and equation 5 after substituting C sigma. Finally, in step number 7, use equations 4 and 5 to find the displacements and rotations at any position along the beam. And there you go. We apply the steps corresponding to Macaulay's method to our simply supported beam to find the rotations and displacements or deflections equations. I mentioned that this is a powerful equation. The reason behind this is that we obtain one single equation that can be used to calculate the displacements or deflections along the beam. Now, what are the typical questions you can answer having these equations? The most usual ones are, for example, what is the maximum displacement found on the beam and where along the beam is found? 
to answer this question, we need to leverage the simplicity of this example. We know that the maximum deflection will be at the center of the beam, or expressed in x coordinate, maximum deflection or displacement will be at x equal 4 meter. Using equation 5 and x equal 4, we get that the maximum deflection will be minus 7.9 millimeters. It is negative because it is downwards as expected. Now, is minus 7.9 millimeters good or bad? That my colleague cannot answer. It is good or bad depending on the nature of the application, and you have to take that into consideration all the time. Also, it is important to know what are the maximum rotations found at support locations. Let's take as an example the support located at point A. Using equation 4, we get that the rotation at A is equal to minus 0 0.003 radians. And negative sign, in this case, indicates a clockwise rotation. I want to calculate the rotation at support C, but rest assured that the procedure is the same as the one applied for the support at A. If you give it a shot, you must get a rotation of plus 0 0.003 radians, which happens to be of the same absolute magnitude as the rotation at A, which is evident thanks to the symmetry conditions of the beam. And that's it. As I mentioned at the beginning, these very same steps are followed for any beam loading condition. If you made it so far and liked the content, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks.